Right, uh, submarines, part two. Um, I want to begin this by, I, I've said a few different times that the system I use for ballasting is a system you won't see in many other places. And the reason for that is that about 15 years ago I had a job in which I used to travel two hours in the country to a particular place and two hours back home. And I used to do it three or four times a week. And I'd get on the, on the country road, set the car in cruise control, and I had time to think. And I thought through this ballast system really in a fairly uncontaminated way. And thought through what would be the best thing that I could do. And I ended up with something actually, looking back on it, which was fairly complex. But the addition of Arduino simplifies it all. So what I haven't done in any other video though is give you some very brief, if you like, statistics on how all of this actually works. Basically, and I'll draw this for the U-boat, it's, it's identical in the Nautilus, but the tubes are a bit bigger. In the U-boat I have a tube here, and in there is all of the electronics for the boat. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Then I have a fitting on here, and a larger tube goes on to the back of it. And in that tube there is a fixed um, baffle. And fitting into that baffle then is a piston. And the piston, uh, the, the tube for the piston, the, the thread, runs back into the control room. And down here I tend to have the motor that drives it and blah blah blah. So this is the ballast system and I then put a ballast cap on the end and into the cap I put the in-out pump. Fairly straightforward idea. Then right in the stern of the boat I put a cap, I bolt it into place, easily removable, put the uh, motors onto that and whatever else needs to go in there, and then put a watertight cylinder over that. And that's basically how it works. Let me describe to you the um, various volumes. Now, the U-boat is 1 as to 50, which, I mean, you can work out the size from that. It basically fits into your car boot very nicely. But if you work out the volume of this bow section here, it's 573 cubic millimeters. This little section here is um, 673. And then we have the ballast section here, which is in fact 921. And then right at the stern, we have the um, motor room which in the U-boat is 723. So that adds up to a total volume of 2,891 cubic millimeters of space that everything is in. Now the ballast tank itself is, as I've said, 921, which is um, 32 percent on the on the whole thing. The piston sitting in there is um, the volume of the piston is um, 240 which is 26 percent of the volume of the ballast tank. So that gives you a picture roughly of how all of this works. Now if I was to now change this to the um, Nautilus you'll see some differences. First of all, this is all the same size. There is still this connection here. There's still the motor. There's still the gear in there. This is now a lot bigger. So the relative sizes are 956 millimeters there, cubic millimeters. In this section here, we have 637. The ballast tank is 1,382 and the motor room is hugely different, 1,000, 
793. So the whole volume of in the boat is 4,770 cubic millimetres. The ballast volume is 1382, which is 29% of the whole boat. I mean, it's really good. This is the good thing about the pump in, pump out. You don't have to work about, worry about pressure very much in the boat. And the piston is 318, which is, in fact, 23%. So that gives you a picture on this. Now, what I've discovered is that the U-boat works extraordinarily well. This percentage is a bit higher. This percentage, I think, is a little bit higher as well. So you've got that extra edge in it. Plus, the, the, um, the, the, the piston itself is a shorter piston because the whole ballast tank is shorter. So it actually travels more relatively more quickly. And this one is a little bit slow. So I find that the piston on here should probably travel a bit faster than it does. That's the only thing. I might fix that one day. See ya. Now a couple of extra calculations to add on to the end. Make sure I'm reasonable. Okay. What I haven't discussed is the speed of the piston um, for effectiveness. Now what I've discovered since I've built both the U-boat um, and the Nautilus is that the U-boat piston speed is practically perfect. It gives me just lovely uh, control of getting neutral buoyancy um, and when I put it into auto surface and auto dive it all works really well so I'm very happy with that. The Nautilus not so. I've got um, in the Nautilus I've got a hundred rev motor and it's turning it's pushing the piston along and I know it's push, pushing it along a bit more slowly and the tube is quite a bit bigger. You've seen the dimensions of the tube which means to get the same purchase and to get the same um, effect on the boat, it really should be moving faster. So I'm just going to do a couple of calculations around that and I'm going to actually change what's in there, but I'm going to give you this now so you've got a bit of an overview. Now remember, this isn't for a piston as a main ballast, this is a, as a piston as an adjustment inside a piston tank. But let me show you what's working really well. First of all, in the U-boat, if I turn the piston on and count off 10 seconds, it travels a distance of 28 millimeters. Now, it's a very interesting uh, point to this that, and I've mentioned this in the in the uh, build-up of the piston, that I'm using six millimeter stainless steel rod, um, six millimeter thread. Now what that interestingly means is that every turn of that rod or of that thread is one millimeter distance. It's very neat. It, 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 just by chance it works very neatly. So if I'm running at 100 RPM in a minute, I will do 10 centimeters. So what I know is if this travels 28 millimeters in 10 seconds, and I'm going to put this little calculator, it's just a little spreadsheet on the website, that it must be doing 168 RPM. Now, uh, that just happens by chance to be what it is, and I've got a very unusual little gearbox in the U-boat that's out, out of a photocopy. So it's 168 RPM. If the whole distance of this thing is 105, it will take 37.5 seconds to traverse the entire piston length. And what I'm saying is that works really well. So now let's think in reverse. Let's think about the, um, the Nautilus. What I've got here is a longer piston. It's 145. What I'm going to say is, I want to cover that 145 in 37 seconds. Because I think that distance is about right and that speed will be all, all right. So according to that, if I'm going to do that, I need this to be running at 235 RPM. 
Now, the motor in there is 100 RPM, so you can see what the problem is. But I've put on order, they're 17 bucks each, I've put on order on eBay a 300 RPM motor. So that's going to kick that lot along quite a bit better, but I think that's probably around about right. So, pretty happy with that. I'm going to have a much more responsive piston in the, in the uh, Nautilus. But that gives you a picture of the kind of travel and the amount of water displacement required to make this whole thing work really well. See ya.